people of the internet. How do you do? My name is Tim De Benedetti. Sometimes I go by the name of Timothy De Benedetti. And I'm going to do a, a fairly impromptu um, little uh, tutorial right now for you about uh, a song called You Enjoy Myself. All right. Um, I've had some people from um, the fish community, okay? Ask me to um, give some example of uh, the teaching, style of teaching that I do, that kind of thing. And um, I offered to do this little bit here um, because I tabbed out the thing for a friend um, last summer, a student who was a, a fish fan. And um, this is my original. Um, no, these are my original notes, I should say, on the uh, on the song, and you know, whatever. I'm not going to make you look at that. It's hard enough to read as it is, but so today I spent a few minutes here um, transcribing it uh, in eight in eight bar sets. Um, the section of the song we're going to look at is uh, in six eight. A section that we're going to talk about today is, um, it was a section that I always found very interesting when I was younger, um, and I wanted to, you know, I would have liked to have known how to have played something like this, but um, it was a bit over my head at the time. So when I do this breakdown of every eight bars or whatever, I'll be talking about how you ought to or how you can understand um, the music. You know, and it would make learning something like this ultimately much quicker for you if you had these um, bits of understanding already in your, you know, already, uh, you know, in your uh, your head. All right, so uh, if you're looking for, um, you know, some analysis, however, and a, a bit of a breakdown, how to actually technically play the piece and so on, that's what I can give to you right now. Um, and that's what we'll do. Let's look at the beginning. There's a first section, and it gets um, kind of recapitulated again uh, in what I will call um, section two. But here it goes, right? It starts in the... Uh, you'll be beginning from G on the 10th fret of the A string. And here we go. Now, it's not a chord effect. It's an arpeggio of a chord, Italian for broken chord you will see that's all this section is. This is a number of arpeggios, not very many um, connecting uh, bits uh, in terms of notes that are outside of the chord itself. Um, passing tones, as they would be called, all right? Again, do you see how easy that is to finger? Pointer to ring. Okay, is that well lit enough here? There we go. Pointer to ring. Frets 10 to 13, but now, oh, this will transfer into the next shape, which is an arpeggio on C major, but instead of going up, da 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 da, now it goes da 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 da, it goes down. So, did you see how I did that one more time? I use my middle finger to catch that C there, 13th fret, second string. And you have to be able to make these leaps uh, accurately and... There it is. So... Okay, and we end up on the pointer finger there. That sequence was middle, pointer. You should know this shape already. Every major uh, tr triad here on the uh, fourth, third, and second strings will be made with this shape. Here I'm basing it off of the note C on the tenth fret of the uh, fourth string, therefore I have a C chord. You leave off on uh, the third degree of the chord, which serves as the leading tone of the next chord coming, which is up a fourth. It's three plus one, that's four, right? So one, two, three, four. Same idea here. 
Now, in order to play this, in order to learn, have be able to like learn this as you were, if you were hearing it, as I did, you need to know your arpeggios already. I could play that F major arpeggio either way, or or there's a few different options. Okay, the notes are the same. What are the notes for F? The notes are F, A, C, right, of an F chord, F major. The order number-wise is 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. Same with the G minor chord. 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. Same exact order or sequence of notes. And then comes a little bit of a tricky transfer. So here's how I actually do play that F chord. I try to end on this note C here, whether I use my pinky uh, or my ring finger is a real, you know, it doesn't really matter. Because the next thing I have to do is go. On a C chord again, another arpeggio on a C chord. I think it's easiest to do it this way. This is a digression, but you should know on a set of three strings, because it only takes three notes, three notes, to play an arpeggio, right? Uh, every chord is a, as, it's made of three notes. We call it a triad, a first, the root, the third above the root, and the fifth above the root, whether it's major or minor. It doesn't matter that what I just said it would apply to both. So now you, on any three strings, should know your arpeggios and how to cycle within a chord that you're playing over, in this case, a C chord. Or backwards. And do different picking exercises and stuff like that. That's how you will have the fluidity. That's how you will develop the fluidity necessary to play a piece like this up to speed, which is actually, you know, pretty tricky. So, the first four bars, G minor, C major, F major, C major, and two little bites like that. Here it is again. From there, now that is another E flat arpeggio. That is another major arpeggio played through two octaves. One, three, five, one, three, five. See the fingers I'm using, right? Okay, all right. So then when you end on your pointer finger there on the note B flat, six fret, first string, you will return to the finger that you just used prior to that. Eighth fret of the second string, the note G, and you will do this kind of turning figure. And you might say, why don't I just play it all in the same position? I think it's hard to do it without flubbing the note. D, when you lay your finger down, becomes an E flat. That's not the right note. That's Those are the right notes. G, B flat, G, D, B flat, F. It's a B flat chord. So from E flat, from the fifth measure of the piece, or of the section, pardon me, the fifth measure of this section begins with an E flat major chord. Doubles around. Goes down on B flat on the third fret there. And now you have a sequence of arpeggios over a C major chord. Isn't that pretty? So think about it as cycling through the chord. You should be able to do that forever until you run out of instrument. You should be able to cycle through your chord with, um, what's the word, um, sequences. You should practice this. If you don't know this stuff already, you should practice this kind of stuff. I use uh, fingers. 
I go, pick an O-ring, because that's just the best way to play kind of tripletized arpeggios at this tempo. Right? Can you play faster than that with a pick? Not really. And you can't play it cleanly either. At least I can. And there are other patterns like uh, down, up, down. I think that's more appropriate for something like one e and one e and rather than triple it or one two three one two three an even keel of three counts. When I get there, pick middle pick, pick middle pick middle pick middle. That's what I do. So the whole thing goes, the whole two measures, the last two bars of this section. Now here's how it sounds up to speed. Mm -hmm. 